Y'all can do better than that. I believe somebody will give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house on this morning. For truly it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. God is good on today. And I would have you to know God didn't just start being good on today. God been good for a long time. God, anybody here can say God and open some doors for you. Anybody here can say that God has made ways where you didn't see a way. Doctor said it didn't look good, but look at you not doing well, doing healthy. God has been good. And we know what man puts a period and says it's over. God can put a comma and say, you know what? I'm not done with this person. I'm not done with this situation. I still got some more work to do in their lives. And I'm glad that he still got some more work to do in our life because that's why we're here on this morning. By the grace and by the mercy of God, he kept us a little while longer. Didn't have to let us live, but I'm sure enough glad that he did. Bro, you got the praying up here, man? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. You got to praying up here. You were praying like my granny prayed. Well, it reminded me of, man, one thing she was saying that prayer, she said, I'm glad that the bed that I laid down last night wasn't my cooling board. And she said, I'm glad that the sheets that I laid down on, they weren't my winding sheets. You know, many ways, it could have been another way. But I'm sure enough glad God saw for it to be another way. Amen. And we are here on this morning for the simple fact that we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. So good to see everyone that is here. For those of you that are watching us via live stream on this morning, we're so glad that you stopped in to be with us here on this morning. He said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing on anything. He said, there am I in the midst of them. So as already been said, you can't see him, but I want you to know he here up and he all up in here this morning. He's here and whatever you need, God got it and he just waiting to give it to you. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I know you preacher, preacher, you can't be like you normally do because the game coming on today. We, I already made my order for my 50 wings and I got to be there at a certain time to pick them up and everything. But get, uh, uh, it'll be all right. Catch the record. Amen. Catch the record. Amen. 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 First Samuel, first Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30, beginning at verse number one, concluding at verse number eight. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, Lord, and hear my humble Savior, 
Why don't you hear my, my humble cry, Lord, and why on other side are calling, Master, and do not pass me by. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. Look at somebody and tell them I came to get a blessing this morning. And I'm not going to leave here until I get it. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, David and his men arrived in Ziklag on the third day. And the Amalekites had raided the Negev and attacked and burned Ziklag. They had also kidnapped the women and everyone in it from the youngest to the oldest. They had killed no one, but had carried them off as they went on their way. And when David and his men arrived at the town, they found it burned. Their wives, their sons, and daughters had been kidnapped. And David and the troops with him wept loudly until they had no more strength left to weep. David's two wives, Anohim the Jezreelite, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had also been kidnapped. David was in an extremely difficult position because the troops talked about stoning him, for they were all very bitter over the loss of their sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to the priest, Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought him the ephod. And David asked the Lord, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord replied to him, pursue them. For you shall, without fail, recover all. I want to give for our message on this morning. Just look at somebody and say, it was necessary. Look at somebody and say, it was necessary for you to go through it. Now, David and Saul have kind of patched up their relationship at this point. And David is kind of trying to make it through as best as he could. Saul has tried to kill him. David has had to run. David has found himself to be mad. He even played crazy at one point. He's hidden out in a cave. He's acting. He's foaming at the mouth, trying to escape all of the things that Saul did to him. And yet David respects Saul because Saul is God's anointing. And until this time of David's appointment, David still respected the position of Saul. Now David has had to come to the cave of Adullam and pick together 600 men. He didn't have no fancy soldiers like Saul did. He didn't have no roughneck soldiers. He didn't have cool Joe, Snoop Dogg, Freddie Joe and them. He didn't have none of them. They weren't highly skilled. They weren't highly trained. They were just wild and rough guys that he had banded together and made him a little army and went about his business and went into battle and started fighting and fighting and fighting and doing what he could. And on the same side of Saul, but not in the same place with Saul. He loves him, but he can't stay with him. He has moved out from Saul because Saul continues to try to kill him. Even David left Saul even though it meant he would have to leave Jonathan. And Jonathan was the best friend he had ever had in his life. And so he loved Jonathan from afar. And he hid from Saul and he prayed that he would win and he did what he could to fight the same battle on the same side from a different perspective. Yeah. And now David has come to Ziklag for a year and four months he would dwell in Ziklag and yet this would be the time period that would change his life. That would set him on a course to destiny that he had not expected. David has come to Ziklag. Somebody said David is now in Ziklag. 
He has come to Ziklag with Abigail and I know him and his wives and all the Jezreelites. He has come down to Ziklag with these men and their wives and he has kept in Ziklag for four years and four months to stay there and they have gone out to battle to fight the Philistines. They've gone out to fight the Philistines. Yeah, they're going to fight. There is no, no bacon bread. There's no porridge being cooked. They came back home and they found everything burned down. No children running out. Daddy, it's good to see you. No wives running out. Honey, it's good that you come home. None of that has happened. But everything has been burned down. And there's a sign that the Amalekites have been there. Now, y'all y'all have heard about the Amalekites before, right? The Amalekites were the most fierce enemy that Israel had ever had. They were unlike the Philistines, the Amalekites, they were specialists, here it is, at preying on your vulnerabilities. Yes. They didn't go after your, they went after your weaknesses and not after your strength. That's why they took the women and the children. Yes. They weren't bad enough to fight the men, they knew they couldn't do anything with them. So they took the children and they took the women. They went after the weakness of Israel to destroy it and to break it down. And when David comes home from fighting the Philistines, he runs into a ravished house, a destroyed village, raped women, abused kids snatched out of their house because he has got to fight the Amalekites and it all happens there at Ziglag. Ziglag is the place in your life that while you're fighting this over here, before you can get through with the devil that you're fighting over here, here comes another devil that you gotta deal with on this side. And, and Ziklag is the place that before you can get through this, before you can break through that, here comes another issue that you got to deal with. Here comes something else, and you are compounded by adversities and troubles, and you are pushed to your breaking point. Do not expect to get your crown unless you go to Ziklag. Don't expect it for nothing. Nothing in life, listen, comes easy. Nothing in life, nothing comes without some kind of struggle. Nothing comes without some kind of conflict. But by the same token, if you're going through hell in Ziklag, I came to tell you that while you're going through it, God's going to get some glory out of it. I said, while you're going through it, God is going to get some glory out of it. I know Ziklag. Now, you must understand, we talk about a fight. But until you've been in a fight, you don't understand that fighting is exhausting. Even if you win, you're going to be exhausted. Even if you win, you're going to incur some kind of damage. Somebody going to black your eye. You might be missing a teeth here or there. Some broken legs. Some people, hey, hopping back home trying to make it. You got the victory and you beat them, but your knee still bleeding. You got stabbed in your side, but you still won. Don't, don't you think that victory is always pretty? Don't you think that you making it is always going to be easy and it's just going to be laid out? Sometimes you're going to go through some trouble to get to where you want to go in this life. Sometimes you're going to get scratched up. Sometimes you're going to get beat up. But don't allow the traps and the snares and the adversities that you have in this life to keep you stagnant. And where you are, you must realize that if God gave me this devil to fight, I must have enough strength to be able to overcome this devil. If God put me in this battle, I must have what I need to be able to make it to the other side. See, everybody can't deal with mighty warriors because you're so impressed with the armor that you don't realize that under the armor, I got wounded. You don't realize that under the armor, I'm hurting just like you're hurting. But when you win, you come back with the spoils. But sometimes you can't enjoy the spoils that you have because it costs you so much to get it. And David comes back from the battle looking for comfort. And he runs into conflict. Have you ever looked for comfort and ran into conflict? Looking for comfort and running into conflict. If you're not careful, you'll get to a point 
that you stop even looking for comfort because you get so used to being in conflict. That you no longer expect anything better to come because everything in your life sometimes, if you be honest about it, just seems so jacked up. And he comes home to conflict. And he gets back. You must understand. I want you to see this. When, when his men who come back from battle and saw their wives were gone and their kids were gone, they get mad at David and want to kill him. So he has fought the Philistines. And then he's been ravaged by the Amalekites. And now his own people have turned against him. Now that's a painful thing because I'm sure y'all can attest to this. It's hard to fight the folk that you love. I mean, y'all going to act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But, but, but somebody here knows what it's like to survive everything else. And then the people that you thought would be happy for you are not happy for you. To have survived everything else and then the people that you just knew was going to have your back, they're nowhere to be found. Somebody knows what I'm talking about here when you come home to hell. Somebody in here knows what it's like to have an enemy in a strange place. And all of a sudden, the people that you're fighting with are talking about fighting you. And they've rent their garments. And David is injured yet again because he has been betrayed by the people that served under him. Because they have insulted him with their disbelief. And the most insulting thing you can do for a leader is to stop believing in them. Because what makes us great is our faith in the God that we serve. And when you leave people that have no faith in you, you can't take them nowhere. So you constantly trying to pour water in their mouth, constantly trying to get them to drink. When they ought to be at a point right now, they can open the bottle for themselves. They can turn it up for themselves. They can drink it for, for themselves. That's why when you believe in somebody, even if it's a child, they'll perform better in school. Because they know they got somebody that's believing in them. When they bring that report card home and they, oh, oh, you did such a good job. They know, you know what, if I continue to do this, my mom is going to continue to be proud in me. And that's why even in the body of Christ, you got to support those that have rule over you. You got to believe in your deacons. You got to believe in your preacher. You got to believe in your elders. You got to support the work that they are doing. Because you think the devil is after you, man. He wearing us down on the left side, on the right side, stepping on us, beating us down, coming at us in ways that we never thought that he would come and at the end of the day the people that we are out here giving our everything for we need you to at least believe in us they've taken his wife they've taken his children and now they've taken away their belief in him and David sat down in despair and almost gave up I want to ask you a question. It's just between me and you. Just act like ain't nobody else in here. It's just me and you right now. Have you ever come to a point in your life where you wanted to give up? Have you, ever, have you ever come to a point in your life where you almost gave up? Have you ever come to a point in your life? Isn't it funny that when you've had good teaching and you've run out of strength and you run out of energy, good teaching will come in and make you stand when you feel like you can't stand? And at the point you feel like you're ready to die and collapse on the floor. And he said to himself, you know, I can't do this anymore. I'm sick and I'm tired. And even those who are with me don't believe in me anymore. And I thought that we would be able to stick together. And they don't want to stick together with me anymore. And then he needed to have nobody but himself. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Tell somebody you're going to have to learn how to encourage yourself. Can I tell you, you're not going to always have a cheerleader in your corner. You're not going to always have a hype man in your corner. You're not going to always have somebody there to tell you it's going to be all right. You're not going to always have somebody there to tell you you're going to make it over. You're not going to always have somebody there to tell you that things are going to get better. But they in the midnight hour when ain't nobody but you and your God. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. I'm going to make it out of this thing. I'm going to get to the 
other side. God has never put more on me than I am able to bear. If he brought me to this place, there must be light at the end of the tunnel. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. Sometimes your kids can't encourage you. Sometimes your husband and your wife, they can't encourage you. You got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. We've been may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, now David, he just got back from fighting the Philistines. Just got back from there. Come home, and now he got to fight his own people. Now he got to go out after he get through with his people, and he got to go fight the Amalekites. And he went back out to fight the Amalekites. He was tired. Half of his army has collapsed on their way to battle. And they say, you know what? We can't go no further. They stopped. But because David was the kind of man that encouraged himself, when other people collapsed, he just kept on going. Because he had something on the inside of him that renewed him in the time of battle. See, some people get beaten by the battle, and some of us get better in the battle. I said, I said some people get beaten by the battle, and then there are others that get better in the battle. Man, you can attack me, you can hit me, man, I dare you. If the devil was smart, he would have never jumped on you because there's something jumping on the inside. I'm talking about the power of God at work in your life. And David, David said, you know what? Stay here. We going on. I'm not going to let your attitude keep me from getting what God has promised me. I'm not going to let your laziness keep me over here. And I'm missing out on the opportunity. If you want to stay here, you can stay here by yourself. I'm going on with God. David said, you know what? We're going to go on. You stay here. You stay here. We got to go on any further. You see, sometimes... Everybody can't keep up with you. Everybody cannot keep up with you because everybody does not have the capacity to get beat up time after time and after time again and keep on going. Everybody don't have that ability. Everybody don't have that strength to go after disappointment after disappointment and to still get up and say, I bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And, and he didn't rebuke them for being tired. He didn't rebuke them for being tired. And you know what? He didn't even try and sit a while and wait on to get rested up. He loved them. But he kept on moving. He loved them, but he kept on moving. You see, some folk, you can love them, but you got to keep on moving. I'm sorry you fainted, but I still got a fight I got to face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you gave up, but I'm going to keep on going ahead. I'm going to keep on. Stop feeling guilty because you renewed your strength. Stop feeling guilty. Stop feeling guilty because they back there. They back there because they want to be back there. They got the same 24 hours in a day that you got. If they want to make something, if they want to get out of where they are, the same God that got you out is able to get them out as well. So David, David is now in a military recession. Folk fainting. Folk giving up. We tired. We going as far as we can go. I can't do it. Man, they know I took my kids and my wife. What do I got to live for? I got to take my boots off. Yes, sir. Now, y'all, listen. He got, he got half of the men that he got to fight the Amalekites than he did when he, had, when he went out to fight the Philistines. But David said, you know what? I'm going to fight anyway. You see, I've learned something in life. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not about how many people you got with you, but it's how tough are the few that you got left. 
You see, I'd rather have 300 rough neck. I'll take my earring out, give me my Vaseline, put my tennis shoes on, I'm ready to go out, than to have 3,000. I can't do it. They're fickle, they're mumbling, they're complaining, and they're groaning. I don't got have time to pat you on your back. I ain't got time to feed you. We got to go on and pursue after what God has promised us. Tell somebody you need to encourage yourself. Tell somebody, encourage yourself until something happens. Now, now, see, now see, if you've ever been through battle, after battle, after battle, after battle, after battle, something you realize that after all of that, something got to change. After all of that, something got to take place. If you have faced disappointment and fear and adversity and trauma, something is about to happen in your life. In a short period of time, you had a long period of trouble. I say in a short period of time. You had a long period of trouble. Something is about to happen. You can ask any woman that had never been pregnant. You can ask any woman that's ever been pregnant. Because she'll tell you, the faster the pain comes, the quicker the baby going to be delivered. See, that went over some of y'all head. I said, the, fa- the quicker the pain comes, the quicker the baby is going to be delivered. And when you get the zigzag, you are going through one thing after another and after another. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but, but you got to realize that you have been through hell and high water and this thing after that thing. And if you can fight the Amalekites, God has already told you to pursue and to go after it. You ought not be afraid. You ought not be a timid because you shall without fail recover all. Word up for somebody this morning. Word up for somebody. You got less help than you've ever had. But with God, you can get more done than you've ever done in your life. I say you got less help. You got less resources than you ever had. But with the help of God, you can get more done than you've ever done before in your life. I, you, but, but, but. So David says, you know what? Y'all stay here. You may not believe, but I still believe. You may not have the faith. Your belief may not be at the point that you can believe God for those things that you cannot see. Your faith may not be at the point that you cannot believe God beyond today for what you can see today. But my faith believes the word of God. And he has already promised me that I shall without faith. That's a You shall without fail, meaning you ain't just going to get some of your stuff back. You're going to get everything back, everything that the devil took. He shall restore everything that the locusts and the cake were and the palmer were. Everything that they ate, it shall be restored. Use what you got now. Use your two fish and your five by the Lord. Use your little bit of powder oil. Use your matter, the little bit of faith that you got. Because if it's all that you got left, that's all that God needs to move and make something happen in your life. So he beat the Amalekites. And he's coming back from the battle with the Amalekites. And he just been at home about two days in Ziglag. And it gets worse. Somebody, your time is up in Ziglag. I've been through the hell. I've been through high water. Trouble after trouble. But it's time for me to shift. It's time for something to happen in my life. And David says, you know what? David, David says, you mean, you mean. God had me in Ziglag. Going through all of this turmoil. All of the things that I've experienced since I've been here, all of this trouble, he delayed me, he detained me, he held me back. I was stuck in Ziglag. I felt like giving up. I felt like quitting. But I had to stay in Ziglag because something was about to happen. It was necessary for it to happen. It was necessary. 
for me to go there. Somebody here this morning, you questioning God right now. Lord, why do you have me here? It's necessary for you to be here at this moment. Lord, why am I having to go through this? It's necessary for you to go through it. You, you don't see what God is doing, but as we talked about on last week, God is your architect. God is your constructor. God is working on the specifics in your life. God is building you up. God is shaping you up, and you may not understand his process, but it's necessary. It's necessary for you to go through it. Thank you, Jesus. Because if he did not take you through what he's taking you through, you would never learn how to fully trust him. Count it all, George. Count it all, you, you would never learn how to just fall back in, in the arms of God. You, you would never learn how to just cast all that you got on him. Because he cared for you. Until God is the only one you can really call on. You don't know that he's everything that you need. Until God is the only one that you can look to. Mama can't give you no relief. Daddy can't give you no relief. Sister and brother, they can't help you. You got to go down on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help. I know if thou withdraw thyself from me. Lord, where am I going to go? What am I going to do, Lord, if I ain't got you? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. David said, David said, Lord, I just got out of a battle. I'm, I'm on my way home. I'm thinking my wife is going to have steak and potato waiting on me when I get to the house. And she gone. My children, they're not running out. They gone. Been taken away. And you realize, people can be going through the same thing and handle it a different way. David had lost his wife and kids just like everybody else lost their wife and kids. He wasn't walking around, man, you should have did this, you should have did that. Why you ain't do that? Why you? He wasn't trying to cast blame. David turned to the Lord. And you must understand that in this day and time that we're reading about, the only one that had access to go before God was the high priest. The only one that could put on the ephod was the high priest. So you got to understand, you can't skip over that. When David says, bring me hither the ephod. In other words, David said, man, I know you got a job, but I got to go to God for myself. I know you got something that you got to do, but you don't know what I've been through like I know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm dealing with like I know what I'm dealing with. I know I respect your position. But I got to go to God for myself. He said, bring me the ephod. Bring it to me. I don't want you anything. I want you to pray for me. You can continue to pray for me. But I'm going to go to God for myself. They said, bring me the ephod. They went for God. Lord, what shall I do? Stop trying to run to everybody else asking them. They don't know what to do for themselves. How are they going to help you out? <laughs> David went to the Lord. <laughs> David said, David said, Lord, what am I going to do? <laughs> These folk talking about killing me. Yeah. They're they trying to stone me. Yeah. It ain't my fault. I was out there fighting with them. How is it on me? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well, what am I going to do? These folk took all our stuff. Burn everything that we had to the ground. What am I going to do? Shall I, should I go after? Or should I just sit here and look ugly? Or should I go after them? The Lord said, pursue. Some of y'all wondering right now, should I just stay here and wither and die? Or should I go? God said, pursue. Go after it. And here's the good part. Because when you go after it, you're not just going to get your pots and pans back. You're going to get everything back. But this is the blessing in the story. This is the blessing in the story. Because Ziklag was not the only city that they had went to. Ziklag was not the only place that they had went to and stolen all of their possessions. So not only did they get their stuff back, they got everybody else's stuff back as well. 
Can I tell you that we serve a God that will open up the windows of heaven for you out of blessing that you ain't got room enough to receive. The wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the righteous. God is still the object of your love. At the end of every single one of those failures, you turn to a rock that is higher than you. After every single one of those failures, like David, he didn't go out in the crowd 
Hey man, what do you think I need to do? Man, these folks talking about killing you. Help brother, look out for me. What you think I gotta do? No, he didn't do any of that. Because they were in the same boat he was in. How you gonna expect me to get you to the other side? I'm in the same boat that you in. So David, David, David he didn't look to them. He went to the Lord. And God gave him an answer. Then I'm sure, I'm sure David wasn't expecting all that. All he wanted was his stuff. God said, you're not only going to get yours, I got some more stuff that I want to do for you. I got some more stuff that I want to do in your life. But the only way you're going to get it, you got to go after it. You got to go after it. Child of God, can I tell you it's not just going to show up? I'm not going to come back with my Amazon uniform and ring your doorbell and put it at your front door. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to happen like that. Not just going to flop down. You're going to have to go after it. You want your marriage to be stronger? Go after it. You want a better relationship with your kids? Go after it. You want a stronger relationship with God? Go after it. Whatever it is that you're seeking, you got to pursue. You got to go after it. Because if you just stay right here, just look. Taxes. <laughs> oh, take what we said there. Who said? These last two dollars. Come on, somebody. Just sitting here. Waiting on something to happen. Ain't gonna get nowhere. Ain't gonna get nowhere. Well, it's, it's, no, it's not gonna happen like that. You're gonna have to go after it. You're gonna have to pursue it. And God is already assured us. Pursue. Go after it. And you shall, not your might. You shall. And you're not, man, this is, you're not even going to experience failure. It. You shall without fail. Recover all. Not a piece of gold lost on the road. You gonna recover every bit of what you lost. And then so. We serve a God, y'all. And I'm sure y'all know this. That would never allow loss unless he got to replace it. He would never allow you to experience something like that unless he had something else planned for you. Unless there was something else on his schedule, on his timeline for your life. So recognize, if I lost it, I might as well be looking out because something else is coming. If I, if I lost it, if I lost it, Job lost everything that he had. I mean, in one day, you lost all your kids. Your, your kids died. You lost all your property, all your cattle. I mean, bad news after bad news after bad news. Man, by the time that third, by the time the third message came out, I was like, man, don't tell me. I don't even want to hear it. Don't, don't come in here. Try, uh -uh, I don't want to hear it no more. I got all the bad news that I can handle today. Job said, though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust in him. Joe said, you know what? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait upon the Lord. I'm going to wait on him. I'm going to wait on him. Because, and, at the, and because he waited, the Bible says by the time you get to the end of the book of Job, God restored everything that he had lost. Look at somebody and tell him, say, God will give you double for your trouble. It was necessary. It was necessary for me to go through that. At the moment, I did not understand. At the moment, I felt like this was a messed up situation. God, what are you trying to do? I really don't understand it. And quite frankly, I like it. That's it. Be real. That's how you talk to it. Be real. Be real, Lord. Lord, Lord, you know I got stuff that I want to do. Joe, hurry up with this stimulus check. What? Play. Lord, I done already planned out what I'm going to do with it. Amen. I already got a plan. Lord, hurry up. 
That's how you talk to God. When it's just you and you. That's how you talk. That's how you talk. That's how you have conversation. Because sometimes you just don't understand what's going on. But then we have to reserve ourselves to the fact that our thoughts are in his thoughts. Our ways are in his ways. I as the heavens are from the earth. So far are his ways from our ways. So if it's my time to be in the I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to go through it. Because it's necessary. I don't, I, I don't understand all this trouble. Lord, I, I, I do all I can by you. Serve you as faithfully as I can. Why is it that I'm having to go through this? Newsflash, you're not the only one. You just know about your stuff because you're experiencing it. You don't know what the person behind you, the person beside you, they smile real good, but you don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know that when they get in their car, they're going back to take glass. You don't know that when they get, when they get on the job, there's trouble on every hand. But child, the children of God, can I tell you, it's not what you go through, but it's how you go through. Amen. And you got to be made of something in respect to make it. In closing, you can put a potato and an egg in the same pot of boiling water. One going to get soft and one going to get hard. Same in the Made out of two different things. Are you sustainable enough to make it through your ziggler? Are you built with something that is able to sustain trouble after trouble, pain after pain, heartache after heartache? Because if not, I want to point you to someone that can give you what you need. It's the same man that David went to. God. And when you find yourself in places like this in life, because guess what? If you're not in a place like that right now, keep on waking up and saying thank you, Jesus. Keep on waking up and saying thank you. You're going to experience a moment. And it does not have an age limit. Children experience. Teenagers experience. Young adults experience. Oh, everybody is just on a different level. We all experience moments in our life where we really don't understand what God is doing. But we have to reserve ourselves to the fact that he got the answer to what you're going on. And if you want to get out of Ziggler, and if you want to get all your stuff back, if you want to overcome, if you want to get back to that, your old places, you can't stay where you are, church. Some of us have been sitting in our spot so long that left a den in the seat. up from where you are. Pursue. Go after it. I'm too old, man. I can't go back to school. You want to go back? Pursue. Go ahead. Ain't no such thing as I can't what I can't do. You can't do it because you don't want to do it. That's the only reason. But if it's something that you desire in church, pursue. Go after it. You shall without fail recover all. It was necessary for me to go through it. It was necessary for you to deal with it. Because you can truly look back over your life at this moment, I know, and you can say, if I didn't go through everything that I went through, I wouldn't be sitting up in here this morning. I'd still be in the bed hungover from last night. I'd still be out washing my car. I'd still be out playing golf. I'd be out fishing. I'd be doing any and everything that I want to do with me giving God no time. But because I went through what I went through and he brought me out safely, I got to praise his name. I got to bless him. I got to lift him up because I'm only here at this moment because he brought me out of my situation. Maybe somebody's needing God to bring you out this morning. He's not just able. He is more than able. The Bible says that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. That means whatever you're thinking, he can do more. You, you just want a bologna sandwich. He's thinking steak and potato. That's, that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of, that's, that's the kind of differentiation I'm thinking about. God can do exceeding and abundantly.
abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. But it's according to the power that works in us. God loves us. He loves you enough to send you to Ziglag. He loves you enough to take you through those situations and those circumstances, building you up as his child so that you'll be able to handle the next test that you're going to go through in this life. Because can I tell you, the test that you're in right now ain't going to be the last one. The pain that you're dealing with, the hurt that you're feeling right now is not the last time you're going to feel this way. But what are you going to take from this instance into the next instance so the next one won't affect you like it did in this one? Maybe you're watching this morning. Maybe you're here and you don't know God as your, your Savior. You have not yet been buried with him in the watery grave of baptism. You at this moment are an alien sinner outside of the will of God. My friend, my brother, my sister. I don't, I don't know what it will take for some people to say yes to Jesus. You would think that amidst a global pandemic, you would think that amidst economic crisis, social, political injustice, everything that's going on, you would think that people would be trying to find God at a time like this. But I, I see so often it seems like when folk get in trouble, it seems like they get sometimes a little bit further and further away from God. But I tell y'all, if we've never needed God before, we need him today. We need him now. The Bible says that life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while. And soon it vanishes away. You remember the show? And so drops the sand in the hourglass. So are the days of our lives. Can I tell you? At this moment right now. You are closer to your life's end. Than you were when you woke up this morning. Every day that you leave home, get in your car, you don't know whether or not you're going to get back or not. You're hoping you'll get back because you left your pot on and you don't want it to overboil. You don't want it to burn before you get back. We make plans about what we're going to do, but you don't really know. You don't know what's in God's plan. That's why we ought not make plans and say what we're going to do and then, then I'm going to go here and I'm going to do that. No, if it's the Lord's will, I'll go and I'll do such and such a thing. Because if it's not in the will of God, you won't be able to accomplish it. But it was in the will of God that you, my brother, my sister, that we be saved. It was in his will that we become his children. He, he provided a way. And, and, and he was so serious about that thing that he shed his blood as, as, a, as a, not a down payment, but as a payment for our sins. And for what the state that man had found himself in. Christ came. He lived. He died on the third day. He rose again with all power in his land. And we sing the song, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We can face today. We can beat this challenge. We can make it over this hill. Because he lives, we can do all of that. So why not come to him? He died for you. Well, you can make up your mind to live for him. I know you can. I know There is nothing that this world has to offer you. That is worth you holding on to it so tightly that you die and you lose your soul. Come by hearing his word. Believing the same, repenting of your sins. Confessing Christ as your savior. Being buried with him in baptism. Having your sins washed away, done away with. Never to rise up before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. The Lord himself will add you to his body. Remain faithful unto death. And you'll receive a crown of life that will never fade away. Maybe you're here today or maybe you're watching. You're already a Christian, but you just say, man, you know what? I need somebody to pray for me. Because I'm going through it, man. I'm dealing with life right now. And if you be real with yourself, it ain't always easy to deal with life. So you say, I'm dealing with life right now. I'm dealing with my circumstances. And before I throw my wig across the room. I need somebody to pray for me. Prayers of the righteous. They still avail much. So my friend, my brother, my sister, don't put off today what you got plans on doing tomorrow. While the blood is running warm in your veins, 
while you have this opportunity. Why not? You know what you need to do. Don't nobody else know. You know what you need to do. It's between you and God. Take advantage of this opportunity that has been afforded to you as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.